Hi, and welcome to the Margie and Lisa Show. I'm Margie Wiggin. I'm Lisa Jackson. And we're so happy you could join us. We are really excited this evening to have three segments that are going to be really fun in our opinion. And of course, we want you to join the conversation. So please call the number on the bottom of the screen or email us or contact us through Facebook. Our first segment, we are very lucky to have Sheila and Stephen Campbell here. And we're going to talk about the royal wedding. That's right. And the way I know about this, that you might be a wonderful person to talk to about this is because you posted a picture of what you were having for breakfast. That's right. And I, I, yeah. It was and 4 o'clock in the morning, right? Or yeah, 3? 5. 5? Yeah, 5. Well, we, we got up at, I woke up at 4 and I couldn't sleep, but the plan was to get up at 6, make a big Scottish breakfast, because Stephen mm -hmm. is Scottish, um, watch the red carpet arrivals, mm -hmm. and then the wedding started at 7 o'clock our time, which oh, is okay. noon in uh, London. Mm -hmm. So it was great. The, yep. It all went according to plan. Wonderful. Yeah. And tell me again what you had for breakfast. Well, do you want to say? Mm, because sure. you know better. Sure, we had, uh, of course, bacon and egg. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Special bacon. But Scottish rack rashers. They're really Scottish meaty. Scottish rashers. Yes. Yeah, meaty without a lot of fat. Yes. And, bacon and kind they're of thicker sweat. than American. <laughs> yes. You know? yes. And, of course, we had uh, the Scottish sausages, or yes. links, we call them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Scottish, and tatty Scottish scones. Mm -hmm. which are potato scones, you put them in the toaster. Oh. They're flat and, and they're you triangular. cover them with lashings of butter. Oh, and they're goodness. salty yeah. instead of sweet. Mm. Oh, yum. And then the pièce de résistance was the black pudding. You sometimes mm. call it blood yeah. sausage. Yeah, that sounds like very black Swedish. Pudding. I've heard of yeah. blood yeah. pudding. Yeah. Yeah. So what exactly is black pudding or blood pudding or blood sausage? I don't think Is there blood ask. in there? It's mostly yeah. all blood. I mean, yeah, we I made know. it. I mean, they when I was it. a kid, we made yeah. it. So, and you, sometimes people put rice in it or to thicken it mm. or whatever, right. but you cook oatmeal it. Oatmeal is in the Scottish. Oh, oh right. Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Yeah, yeah. Just sweets like put rice or potato in there, and then they cook it just in a lamb um Wait, haggis has oatmeal in it? Yeah. I thought it was just brains. It's liver and kidneys mostly chopped up with oatmeal. Okay. But it's cooked in a sheep's stomach. Yeah. 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 Cooked, yeah. What, what's cooked in a sheep's stomach? Haggis? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 We, we do it in the intestine, but sweet. That's what yeah. my little badge yeah. is here. Is that a haggis badge? It says, eat haggis. Oh. Yeah. See, and I grew up eating stuff like that, so yeah, it doesn't, right. yeah. Oh. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we had tom tom tomato. I call it tomato. You call it tomato. And uh, you slice it in the middle and you... Oh, grill, you like, yeah. you grill or fry. Grill or oh, nice. And do you and do you stack any of that, or you eat it separately, or how you, do you? You just arrange it all on the plate and yeah. put some toast on, some marmalade, and mm. drink tea. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. That's and what we so did. Sheila brought us in some mugs to to yeah. so that we could be officially right. Yeah. Imbibing. Now I have the the you have the yeah. William uh, yes. William and. Uh, Catherine Middleton commemorative yes. wedding mug. Lovely. We have the Harry and Meghan yep. ones, and Stephen has what you have. So tell me about when people were arriving, who struck you as, who you th well, thought was interesting. Who as went. soon as I turned on the TV, there was Oprah looking oh fantastic. Nice. Uh, Queen what of America. She, yeah. uh, she had like a blush color, you know, pink dress on, I think it was Stella McCartney, and it was a last minute change because she was gonna wear ivory or cream or oh, something, yeah, or no. no, she was gonna wear a light beige, but then it it photographed too white, right. and she didn't wanna wear white to yep, a wedding. Right, so and I agree. Kept I Stella that's... McCartney's staff up all night fixing up a dress for her. <laughs> really? Yeah, oh, that's what oh, they wow. said. Yeah. And uh, George Clooney and Amal. Yeah. Amal had what they described as a marigold color gown Oh yes, okay. Gown no, no, on. No, no, no. Actually, might, that might have been McCartney too. Um, but mm. uh, and a matching hat. And George had a matching sort of tie that had some yellow in it and a little pocket scarf. Mm -hmm. And Priyanka Chopra mm -hmm. wore a gorgeous suit with sort of asymmetrical lapels. Yes, she looked fabulous. What color was that? I believe it might have been a gray, mm -hmm, a light gray mm -hmm, color. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know who the designer was. Um, a lot of royals, you know, of course. Um, so they looked fabulous, except Eugenie. I'm sorry. Who's Eugenie? 
Andrew, Prince Andrew's daughter. Oh. She just no. Oh, poor Eugenie. She really needs a stylist. Her dress was just so strange. It had pom poms all over it. It looked terrible. It was oh. really. Strange. How old is she? Well, she's in her late twenties. Oh, you know? oh, I was thinking if no, she was I'm a not gonna kid. make fun of a little kid. <laughs> no, because little kids love pom poms. <laughs> so that would be no. something my daughter. <laughs> yeah, it would have looked good on a four year old, but she's in her late twenties or maybe she's thirty, I don't know. She just never seems to get it right, the poor uh, thing. No. Nope. But know. I have to give credit though for being brave enough to wear something that she really loved. Right. Even You're though right. she's at this, you know, everyone in the world is watching, right. and she decided to wear pom poms. You're a better You're good for person her. than I. Well, you she she know. reminds me, <laughs> she reminds me a bit of her mother, you know, who she her mother looked great actually. She oh, had a navy suit on. She, so. she looked very very good. You never yeah. know. Pom poms might come back in style I know. or in style. <laughs> I don't know if they've ever been in. She's style. ahead of the curve. <laughs> Or if you wanted to cheer, you just take some off. Right? Woo! If you fall, Woo! you get back. Hail <laughs> to the yeah. king. I don't know. Okay, let's not dwell on Sorry. it. Sorry. So the designer dress. of the Meghan Markle dress. Yes. Is she is, I forget her name, but she's with Givenchy. Right, Givenchy. Right. But yeah. Claire Waite Keller. Yeah, I've never heard of her. Is the name. Nope, Claire Waite Keller. And I think there was great secrecy around mm -hmm. that, um, who was designing and what it was going to look like. The designer couldn't even tell her husband <gasps> wow. that she really? was designing. It That's was pretty. Meghan Markle. It was, it was yeah. very yeah. simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and um, there have been, you know, some comments as to who it was trying to look like, um, <laughs> you know. But I think I think the main point was that she looked. Regal. Yeah, she I'll just did. It was yeah. just beautiful. Yeah. And and gracious and did not call attention to the dress. Right. You know, I mean she really, wore the dress. The dress didn't wear. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So this I'm just gonna read this. Who designed Meghan Markle's wedding dress? And it says Markle married Prince Henry Harry and became the Duchess of Sussex, mm -hmm. wearing Claire Waite Keller for Givenchy. Yeah. Markle met Waite Keller in early two thousand eighteen and chose to work with her for her timeless and elegant aesthetic impeccable tailoring and relaxed demeanor is the statement from Kensington Palace. Yes. Ms. Markle also wanted to highlight the success of leading British talent, mm -hmm. which has now served as the creative head of three globally influential fashion houses, Pringle of Scotland, mm -hmm. Chloe, yeah, and yeah. now Givenchy. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Colleen likes our Facebook video, and John wants to know, oops, I just lost it, something. Okay. So a yourself. question I have, I wonder why people are so interested in the British weddings. I think that's, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm sure there's other royalty and I know sweet, you know, yeah. but I mean, I think it's, it's, it's kind of a phenomenon. Why, what, I mean, I can ask you why you're interested, but why, why do you think it's such a, you know, a global event? That is a good question. Do it's princesses. It British Empire. I mean, yeah. Yeah, one, yeah. it wasn't that long ago that Britain, you know, ruled the high seas, if you will. Right, right. And uh, the Commonwealth still exists. Right, right. And, and of course, in the middle of the 20th century, Britain somewhat ceded the leadership of the, the free world to, right. to the U.S. Right. But that special relationship is still very tight. Right. That's a good explanation. I was just curious because I thought it was so interesting. They showed images of people from all over the world watching this. And, oh, I know. And thought it was, you know, and I mean, obviously, it's done very tastefully. It's beautiful. It's a love story. Things well, like, I also you know. think it's that it's the right. It's the fairy tale. It's the princess. Mm -hmm. We don't have princesses here. Right. So here are the, here is the prince and the princess. And then right. there was all of the intrigue as to her background and, right. you know, all of that. Um. And I think because, the, you know, Harry lost his mom oh, in yes. such tragic oh, circumstances. Yes. Oh, right. You know, and yeah. I, I was there on so the day. So we have a lot of empathy yeah. or love uh, for the On the, the day of, of the funeral, I was, uh, I was there mm. in, in Britain. Mm. And um, it was that mass outpouring of grief that right. is unusual for the Brits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. So, so I think that is still very much in people's memory, that Right. Photograph of little Harry right. behind his mom's coffin. Mm -hmm. right. Just you know, so I think people warm moving. to. Yeah. They warm to. to right, her. and they want they want her sons to be happy. 
yes. because right. they loved her so much. Exactly. Right. You know, so there's exactly. that great interest. Speaking of which, um, John had a comment, what do you think of the American bishop's talk and the British yes. reaction to it? And I printed out the whole nice. talk here, um, and the main point of it was love and love and, and love, inclusion. love. And inclusion. Yeah. Mm. Right. Well, let's just notice for a second that he is an African American. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he, one of the first things he said was quoting Martin Luther King love, on yes. the power of love. Right. Yeah. And I think that was, it was all part of the multicultural aspects of the, the um, wedding that I think sent, um, I mean, that was what Meghan and Harry wanted personally, but I also think it, it represented for people around the world the fact that, hey, different cultures can come together and right. get along. I think that's yeah. a really important message. Oh, it was huge. Today. It was huge. Yeah. And I, I, I have tears in my eyes now just thinking about the, just the beauty of that mm -hmm. moment. Um, Bishop Michael Bruce Curry. Yes. He was um, preached fabulous. on the redemptive power of redemptive love. Power. That redemptive power. That was the power sacrificial love. love. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, first African-American presiding bishop of the American Episcopal Church. So he, he is a very special person in his own right. Mm -hmm. And then to be able, you know, to show the world um, this wonderful example of love and, and wisdom, you right. know, in presiding mm -hmm. over this uniquely, um, I think it's coming at such a great point in our history. It really when is. When there is yeah. some, some threatened, threatened for division and divisiveness <laughs> and then just have this you know, right. really, we yeah. are one, and we right. should, we should, right. we could be redeemed by love. Um, so they did start uh, talking about Martin Luther King, quoting him: "We must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love, and when we do that, we will make of this old world a new world. For love yeah. is the only way." Was the Martin Luther yeah. King quote? Mm -hmm. And then he he just kept referring His to style that. Yeah. was not something that British people, particularly uh, nobility, royalty. No. Right. would have been exposed to before in church or anywhere else. Or, or comfortable right. with. So, comfortable. so they needed to get o over their discomfort. Yes. yes and yes. I can see myself 20 years ago cringing at it. Yes. Because it's so different. Because it's so over the top. To. Right. Yeah. Everything in Britain is understated. Yes, right. yes. You see, and this was way over the it top. It was dramatic. Uh, yeah. but I, we're used I, to know, it in America. I'm used to it now, British and standards. I think it's beautiful. Yes. But I understand those, it's a different way. You know, looking at their programs, <laughs> you know, trying not to. <laughs> it made them uncomfortable. You know. <laughs> and there was a comment um, one of these, in one of these articles about the fact that he used you instead of thee and thou. Yes. Yes. So the formal, it was a less attention. formal yes. way of preaching than, than um, maybe people in, in yeah. Great Britain were yeah. uh, used to. So, yeah. so not only the style, but the actual words, the wording. As opposed right. to Old Testament. To and at one point he said, oh, I, well, I guess we better get on because we got to get you all married. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yep. He did yeah. quote, he did quote from the Bible. He quoted New Testament. Mm -hmm. He quoted Old Testament. He talked about Jesus. He talked about um, mm -hmm. Moses. You know, it's just, just yeah. I, I don't have time to read this whole thing. I recommend yeah. people read this. Yeah. It's so amazing. Um, you know, talking about the bomb, there is a bomb in Gilead mm -hmm. to heal the sin sick soul. Um, it's just really all just wonderful references to all these places in the Bible yep. where you refer love to is referred American to. slavery no. and that that slaves uh, did you know rely on spirituals and absolutely um, mm -hmm. to get through what they had to get through. Yeah, that was a it was extraordinary. It really was. Yeah, and so the gospel choir. Oh, oh, that lovely. was beautiful. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just the whole experience. Mm -hmm. Yep. So just another a couple of quotes. Um, imagine this tired old world where love is the way. When love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive. When love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream mm -hmm. and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. Again, mm -hmm. a nod to Mar MLK, Martin Luther King. When love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. And he goes on and on. Yeah, yeah. Just, it was beautiful. I, I had chills, you yeah. know, just so beautiful. Um, and then quoting Teilhard de Chardin, who, who was a French Jesuit, um, you know, person in the 20th century, who was a kind of a scholarly person, again, talking mm -hmm. about love. And so it's something that people could access yeah. regardless of right. their 
background and their belief in their mm -hmm. their religion because and then towards the end dr king was right we must discover love the redemptive power of love so he he did he tied yeah. in martin yeah. luther king and all these different strands mm -hmm. um so did you do you have family still in england that or is in the yeah. in the british isles who did they have anything to say about any do you have any conversation with them or i haven't talked to them actually about the wedding but uh, I think they would all have been watching it. Mm -hmm. um, so my uh, family is in northern Scotland right now, uh, some of them, and some of them are in England on vacation. Oh, lovely. And so they're kind of on, on vacay this. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're going to meet up with some of them in Ireland this Oh, nice. Uh, yes. We had our sister-in-law, Helen Zarba, with us. Oh, nice. Uh, with her daughters, our nieces. And yeah. Helen is from England. Oh. And um, she enjoyed our time together and the wedding very much. And it, it was fun to be able to celebrate yeah. for, for Stephen and Helen to be able to celebrate their British heritage. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah I mean, and what did the nieces think of it? They loved it. They oh, loved it. So yeah, they, they were a little sleepy when, right. when they got up because it was kind of early. Right. Um, yeah. But they, they gradually woke up and... Um, yeah, so, so Helen and I met in Germany when I lived there, and he, she introduced me to um, my now brother-in-law who married my sister. So it's oh, all kind of... Wonderful, it's wonderful. <laughs> That's great. And yeah. Helen married my first husband's brother, yes. so Stephen. It's, yeah. That's karma. That's interesting. Yeah, karma. yeah, it's all kind but of... But I think our so, world is becoming more that way. They're, yeah. They've let down certain ideals and... I think that is another reason why people have followed this is because it's it's kind of breaking down a lot of barriers, yes. barriers right? You know, and really letting people say, "Hey, these are human beings. Yeah. We're yeah. happy that they're in love." You know, and, and it, it's and we should look at everybody as equals. You mm -hmm. know what I right. mean? And I think that you know, from my standpoint, I think that's what struck me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they do. Looking at the two of them together, mm -hmm. they really they just look like a couple they mm -hmm. they look similar in a way right. i think facial features and everything and they just look at it gaze at each other mm -hmm. with this loving and one's always holding the other's hand and right. it's just a beautiful thing he was nervous until Aww. she turned up oh yeah and then oh, really and yeah. then you could see the smile oh. you know but that's, that's lovely. wonderful that's that's really I love special you know so it's they were the 16th royal couple to get to so celebrate their marriage at windsor castle since 1863, mm -hmm. um, the the place of worship, St. George's Chapel, holds 800. And the, the, I love the tradition of the Queen signing the instrument of consent. Mm -hmm. Oh, is, it, is that she what happened? Is that, yeah, okay. I didn't. Yeah, she has not, to not sign really the instrument of consent. A couple weeks before yep. the wedding. Right. Official so document yeah. granting her grandson yeah. permission to right. marry yeah. his fiance In calligraphy. Because wow. she's yeah. the queen. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, that was in the movie, too. We saw a movie yeah, on yeah. there. Oh, you did? Yeah. watched yeah. the Lifetime movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wonderful. Then the cake was a lemon elderflower cake that... Uh, incorporated the bright flavors of spring and uh, the flowers were branches of beech, birch and hornbeam, white garden roses, peonies and foxgloves mm -hmm. from of course the gardens around Windsor Park arranged by Philippa Craddock. Music included well-known mm -hmm. hymns and choral works under the direction of James Vivian, director of music at St. George's yes, Chapel. Yes, and the traditional music, the traditional British music was gorgeous too. Yeah. That choir yeah, was amazing. Was. And the, I would imagine the acoustics there have that yeah. angelic choir yeah. soaring, soaring into yeah. the space. And just of, think, if you're one of the performers, you're performing for Elton John. Oh my gosh, okay. right, 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 right. Elton John, just, that's right. Think about that. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, what else did I want to say? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, right, so here it is. Sir Elton. Talk, Sir about, Elton. Um, Kensington Palace published the Order of Service online, conducted by the Dean of Windsor, officiated by the Archbishop of Canterbury, mm -hmm. They selected words from the <clears throat> Marriage Service of Common Worship, 2000, it says, using contemporary language, yep. you instead of thee and thou. So right. they, right. I guess the, the couple mm -hmm. did that. Um, and Markle did not promise to obey. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's going to be disobedient. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then they then were the, um, <clears throat> then was the gospel choir, 
Stand By Me. Yep. Um, Amen and this little light of mine. Soloist. Yeah. And yeah. then then the hymns included the Welsh rugby anthem Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, otherwise known as Bread of Heaven. So I love it. Yeah. yeah. Markle's ring was fashioned from a piece of Welsh gold gifted by the Queen, while <laughs> Prince Harry's was created from platinum with a textured finish. Nice. So it just you know, just all these little details are so yeah. fun. She was very independent and, and you could tell that she carries herself so yeah. beautifully. I was in Toronto last week, and <laughs> they are very proud of her because she was she was there for three and a half years. I think she did suits shooting and, that show. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Oh, oh, and I didn't even realize that's where that. Of course, that's how yeah. they met. Yeah, in York. So the last thing I want to say because we we actually done. Okay, we don't want to keep you. I did want to mention. Thank you. Kick us out. I did want to mention that um, Markle's mother, yes. Megan Markle's yes. mother, Doria Raglan, is such a beautiful, yeah. gracious. Yep woman and I loved her outfit with the little hat and the, mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. she just looked so yeah. she she looked similar to Megan she, obviously yep, it's her mother yep. and then I was so sad you know that her father couldn't be there yeah. and that whole drama I wanted to sit beside her health. she was by herself for yeah. sweet exactly yeah. exactly yeah. you know I wanted somebody but, but, to be there for her. but you could tell that she she just was so happy and yeah, and looked like a gracious wonderful person herself she has a master's in social work mm -hmm. yeah, that's and right. she's yeah. also a yoga instructor i heard that too she's quite interesting quite yeah. an interesting lady yeah. right yeah. yeah so we can see how megan markle became yeah so wonderful and very grounded and, yep mm -hmm. not only beautiful and charming but also yeah. grounded and and with you Independent know, and good boys. Good parenting. Yeah. yeah. So thank we are out of time. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a thank pleasure. you. Thank yeah. you for bringing our our yeah. food. Yeah. Thank you. Alrighty. <laughs> you can hold on to that. You know where we live. I do. I do. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you so much, thank you guys. And bye. Bye. Don't thank forget you. your beautiful plate. Oh yeah. Thank you for the cookies. Alrighty. Sorry, you got it, sweetie. Wow, I didn't okay. even know we had. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was so nice to meet you. Thank you. Public schools, it's a piece of our education to make sure we have a better house. Welcome back. And for this segment, we have Meg Tyler with us who just won the um, school. Board, school committee, school committee, school committee um, role, and uh, with Amanda Fargiano. Yes. So congratulations. Yeah. And I thank know you. it was. Uh, thank, you. thank you. I know what it's like to to run for office. It's a little exhausting, and there's a lot of sign Stressful. holding oh. and uh, yes. smiling and. <laughs> the smiling is great. It's easy for you because it's contagious. Yes. Right. And Amanda and I were out there for most of the day on Monday in the hot sun. Oh. I, I know you have a beautiful tan and like did you just get back from vacation? It was just sunburn <laughs> right. Monday night and yesterday. Oh. But I think we were kind of we, we grew so accustomed to staring through those windshields right. and waving exactly. yeah. and smiling right. and yeah. we elicited a lot of good response. No yes. barely anyone stopped to vote, but at least, you know, we got some smiles. We got fifteen thousand. Yeah, fifteen hundred. Uh, yeah, fifteen hundred. Yeah. 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 But and I think yeah, I was hoping. Yeah. I think um I've heard that Eight to nine percent in a non-presidential election year right, right. is reasonable, right. you know, and yep. 
the population, someone was telling me earlier, is 16,000 so in the town, but that includes nine. the kids. Right. So, that's you know. How many voters are there in town? Right. 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 11,700. Thank you. Oh, oh. my perfect. <laughs> I was told that in our little campaign <laughs> so line. It's so more, it's more than 10%, <laughs> so that's good. Right. Well, it was good, and, and yeah. other people said because there wasn't a hot ballot question that right. not as many people were drawn to the scene, and it was such a beautiful day. Oh, my gosh. I know. Right. Who wanted to struggle to find parking in the middle school lot? Right. right. Could be outside. Well, and I think, too, like when you have an election that I know when I first moved to town and I didn't know who the candidates were, I, I let other people vote that knew who the candidates were because, like, what am I going to vote on a party? What am I going to vote? You know, like if I didn't have the knowledge, yeah. then I think that's, I think that causes lower turnout, too. You know, I think some people are just like, I agree. Right. I agree. And it's hard to get to know about everybody on that ballot. Yes. Yeah. And I feel humbled when I look at it and I think I don't know enough about this person. Right. Yeah. I, I actually had, um, people had called me and said, who, who are these people? Tell me a little bit about them. Well, that's right. So I, went, I yeah. went as much as I knew about each person. Right. Because... I do know something yeah. about a lot of them, and you, of course. Yeah. And yeah. I also loved hearing that Otto, your son, mm. stood on the corner playing the violin I while know. you stood and held the yeah, sign. Yeah, he old is he? He's nine years old, <gasps> and he taught himself how to play the violin this winter. Wow. And, and that's a hard instrument. It is. I, I got <laughs> one along at the same time, but I'll tell you, I don't play very well, and he corrects me. Constantly. He's just got a nap. Says, your, your posture is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, I didn't sound right. Listen to me, mom. And I then know. Oh, that's cute. So. Yeah. And I have to say, in third, so I had recorder in second grade, which I was awesome at. Oh, third grade, you. I tried to play the violin because it was so beautiful. Right. And yeah. it looked like, oh, okay, we yeah, it's like I a, was terrible. Oh, Celia so started with the violin and so she I, plays so trombone it, now. It only okay. lasts yeah. one year That's on good. violin. So the fact that Otto just could teach himself and then is He's so, natural. he just looks so comfortable and happy. Oh, and then is. he was on the corner. He was on the corner what playing while kid. you were. I know. So, yep. Yeah. So you, I, I was so delighted that you took on this challenge mm, because I think you, you have a lot of things that you can bring to the school committee. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel very humbled by being elected. It's an extraordinary experience, isn't it? Yes. To have many strangers vote for you mm -hmm. to, yes. to stand up and to speak. So. I feel very grateful for all the support. Yes. I think that we have such strong and smart people in this town. We do. Yes. Really and do. really wonderful kids. Oh who, my gosh. Who need us. Yes. Right. You know, especially and the ones. And one yeah. of the best schools in the country. I mean, in, in, in the state. So, Absolutely. you know, it's very important the people that are up there. And, and I don't know if most people realize, but the school committees volunteer. Oh, and they're all, it's yeah, all volunteer. I know, I know, but I just, <laughs> I, everything's volunteer, and I think right. a lot of people that aren't involved in town politics or involved in yeah. their community, they don't realize that volunteers set aside time away from their families, spend extra time, you know, in oh, the ladies. evening doing research and, and really adding your expertise to this. We're very lucky to have people like yourself and and to really get involved in in that care about our kids and care about our community. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah. I think it's good we're not paid. I think right. that, I think so too. You know, a salary yeah. can compromise. Keeps you honest. It does. You know. And I love doing this work because my heart is in it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I care so much about what is happening in the ground in those classrooms. Right. Yeah. And how every kid is experiencing that. And, right. and that's really what I want to learn more about. Yeah. I mean, I of course, I've been in education forever, but university students are a bit different. So you are, um, you're, that's your background? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And I teach a very heterogeneous mix of kids mm -hmm. at BU. Nice. Um, and we have a kind of less heterogeneous mix here, but it's becoming more it so. It is, which I think I God like it's fantastic. Yeah. Yes, it's better. Think, yeah. think of all the kids will learn from each other. Yeah. Absolutely. I just think I these, see it every day. That's right. Yeah. These yeah. opening minds. Yes. So yeah. yes, yes. I think the more that we support diversity awareness and mm -hmm. cultural difference awareness and celebration. Right the better for us all. Well, right. that positive yeah. attitude brings forth learning, and when yeah. there's negativity or people not understanding other cultures, I think it, it just stops learning. It slows learning well, down. Well, and then it, it, can, yeah. it can 
veer into bullying and all of yeah. that kinds of kind of because I think bullying's but, fear in a way. Oh, absolutely, yeah. it's ignorance. Yeah, you it's know, ignorance not knowing, and fear. not yeah. knowing, as opposed yeah. to being stupid. It's really you don't know this right. other person, so they push and them sometimes away. it's a fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to us a little bit about the your other connections in town? So you've been on the diversity committee. I mean, the multi. What is it called again? Cultural. Hopkinton Cultural and Diversity, Diversity Alliance. Alliance. I always sorry, get that. Excellent. Which was established by Timoria yes, Saba, yes, who has yes. contributed so much oh, to this yes. society. Yes. And I'm really grateful to her and to Mina Barat yes. for yes. dragging me out of my house. <laughs> yes. No, it's a wonderful get out of here. Really, yeah, yeah. You know, and telling me, Absolutely. look, stand up and speak and, right. and do something and volunteer. Right. And, you know, I've been very inspired by their courage and their mm. strength because. I think when you stand alone and you stand up and you start speaking your truth, a lot of people will back away. Yeah. And that can be an incredibly lonely feeling. It is, I remember yeah. when I was younger and my mom said, well, You and I have been there. Yeah, know, yeah. You know, my mother said to me, You really need to get used to the fact that you can't make everybody like mm. you. Mm. And that's probably for the best. Yeah. Because if you have integrity and right. you stick to your values yeah. right. and you're not going to smile at every single person who comes at you with knives and daggers, then right. you're going to make some enemies. And I mean, I don't think of people as my enemies. I'm, I, I'm generally but really being interested true to yourself, in that people. That opposition right. helps you yeah. see a different side to things. Is sometimes that's, you know, and, and sometimes right. through what you say can help them see a different side as well. So people right. that give back to the public, that's kind of what, you know, that opposition is is hard it is. to take. It's a big gulp <laughs> to take. It but, it, you know, I think if you if you handle it dignified and you give a thoughtful answer and right. do your research and and people appreciate that. I mean, I think whether they agree with you or not. That's right. And to care about all the people you're talking Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah. And also you coming know. from, you know, so you you bring to this a background coming from academia yeah. yes coming from the HDCA coming from I are you on youth commission as well or you no just no I attend I'm on, sometimes tends I'm, well I'm friends with most of the youth yep. commission yep. members <laughs> yep. Yep. Tends, <laughs> right um, so and and um, you know I think being someone who cares and not only cares but acts right. yeah. I think that's the important thing is, is a yeah. lot of people can talk and and have conversations about the issues but to actually do something about it is laudable yeah. and greatly appreciated right you know because yeah. you do have to put the time in and there's sacrifices and right. I mean, you sacrifice things for you know but i also think you set a good role model right i mean you set a good role model for your friends your us fellow citizens you know i think it's you know it's really a very you know we're lucky to have people like yourself that you know, care and want to represent. And your son, your son will see, wow, you know, my mom cares and she, you know, rolled up her sleeves. It's a lot of work. It is a lot. We've served on committees and it it's is. a lot of work. I mean, I remember getting up early, you know, staying up late, reading, yep. and, you know, and that. sometimes you have to <laughs> say well, things that you, that really are, we wouldn't say necessarily in, in, you know, like in your private circles, but you have to say it publicly Take because. A stand. It, yeah, and you represent a constituency, so you have to, you know, share what you hear from others. That's you right. Know. What you well, and I think parents. in her position in the on the school committee, yeah, a big... there's discussion, and and I know I um, I think of Mina, you know, Mina, who I love dearly, will say, I just have a question, and she'll ask something very brilliant. And then everyone has to stop and think, yes. you know, so there are, there are different roles on that committee. That's right. There are people who have that, well, just let me explain this to me. A softer, and there are other people there are who, bulldogs who that know, are, yeah. you know, oh, well, this right, is how we do right. this, and this is what we did, and this is how we, and, and so you, I mm. just so appreciate your, your uniqueness as another That's facet right. of that community, because I think we need that mm -hmm. broad spectrum in order to right. represent our children because we I'm don't sure. have one flavor of child that's right, right. you know and we Very need to well be put. able to to represent everybody right right, right. and to have diversity almost on the right. the committee exactly. is, is important yeah. because I then so everybody important. has a different eye or a different 
vision of how things happen around them and what affects them. That's right. Mm. That's right. And I think Mina's goal of agitating thought is mm. a really noble one. And I don't mean I agitate in no, 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 negative no, no, ways. Yes, yeah. The washing machine so agitates the clothes, but that's for the good. Right. 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 And well, I, she, think, I think it's better yeah. to not just say, oh, okay, you know, I think it's better to have something Ask questions exactly well yeah. you're there to do a job i mean i serve on committees in my 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 job so i serve on right. a lot of committees and i'm there to have action items and get things done i don't want to sit there and schmooze yeah. i want stuff done yes so i mean like for people that push that a exactly. little bit more it's very easy to have small talk and just kind of say mm -hmm. oh that's great this is great this is working well right. but really when you get down to it a working committee yeah. works you know I mean you look at what the issues are you address them you listen to everybody's viewpoint and you come to a decision and I think you do raise the question because if you don't raise the questions then it's just rubber stamping exactly. yeah and then everyone okay that's fine that's fine and there's committees no, yeah no. you need to raise the questions and yeah. have the conversation right. um, by the way Lisa said uh, your neighbor across the street says hello oh hi Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who, who that is, but they say hello. Yeah. And um, so what ha going on to the committee, are there some thoughts you had about specific things you would like to change, or do you just want to uh, have your input into the things that are ongoing, or do you have any thoughts that you... Well, yeah. Yes, I mean, I thought a, a great deal about it and felt, of course, inadequate to the position. No. Um, but... But I'm not saying that in a self-deprecating way. Curve. I have a lot to learn, and yeah. that's okay. It's a learning, I love learning. curve when you get on I love working hard. I, too. Um, I think what I've learned from teaching over the years, too, is that in order for an idea to be real, we have to discuss it at length. Mm -hmm. We have to give time and deliberation Democracy. to it. Yeah. We can't make hasty decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, for one, would love to see more public forums connected to what happens in a school committee mm -hmm. because so many of those decisions involve parents. I think of the switching to a different after-school program was done um, so quickly, and I guess we all right. should be reading the agendas that all the took time. Me off a little when they, yeah. I think a lot of us, especially the parents of children with special needs, were surprised because we've grown so accustomed From to the, the support YMCA of the YMCA. Right. And before the YMCA, it was a different program. That's right. So, so yeah. yes. we need to talk about this. Right. Parents need to get together and let's talk and let's right. discuss it with the school committee. So the right. next time we make this choice, right. it's informed by the people who matter, right. and we're not terrifying kids and their parents right. by the shock of another transition. Well, right. and you can do, I mean, more outreach. I mean, that's probably yeah. how you engage more, and that's a hard thing so. to do because people are so busy. Because I was yeah. taking, my, Celia yeah. went to that after-school program, yeah. my daughter, and she yeah. loved it. She outgrew it, like all kids do. But I mean, like I, when I heard that, I'm like, oh my god! Okay. And then that's part of Hockington, and it's kind of a mainstay in Hockington, the it YMCA. Is. Well, and I think yeah. I watched, yeah. I watched the kids come in and right. out with their YMCA young adults. Right. And I have to say, those young adults are amazing. Yeah. They are, it's they're just wonderful. Great. They have a great camaraderie with the kids. Yeah. Not that the new group of people wouldn't, That's right. but they're That's used right. to these, you know, just, yeah. I think more openness in communication regarding Absolutely. these changes Absolutely. is so important, even if it's going to happen anyway, right. you know, as, as right. opposed to the abrupt Oh, okay. I guess right. something happened. And that's a challenge to get people to engage or even to get the right. information. And if how they do feel you like their their voice doesn't matter? Right. Then they then they do become less. Well, engaged. even to yeah, reach you them, you feel so yeah. alienated when these decisions are made right. beyond you. Right. And, you know, I used to think maybe it's the New England Reserve which makes committees not invite these public discussions. It's oh, it's easier yeah. if the public doesn't come. But then I think, <laughs> well, it's well, easier. Just, yeah. <laughs> but, Sometimes you see so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it really is worth it, collecting opinions. I agree. Yeah. Turning this over. And use it as part yeah. of the decision-making yeah. process. Yeah. So. Dawn, Dawn says hello. Hi, Dawn. And Hi, she Dawn. says, great <laughs> conversation tonight, ladies. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks, Thank you, Dawn. Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what are your goals? Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. What do you, what do you, so you went into this, you ran for the school committee, you're on it. What do you want to see, like, what are your points that you want to bring out? And, and what do you see that, not that you want to change, but brought you as an interest and, and you wanted to see 
that you can help with or fortify. Right. Well, I, I think I'd be false if I said I don't want to change a lot of things. Right, right, right. You know, Why else which would you? I yeah. do, but yeah. I also understand the limitations sure. of the system yeah. and the limitations of my position on the school committee. Sure. At the same time, I want to encourage a lot of conversation mm -hmm. about these things that matter. You know, what's going on in special education and how can we best support those kids and yeah. how can we ensure the ones who aren't speaking aren't being bullied too? Right. You know, right. along with right. the ones that do speak. Exactly. Out. Right. And what yep. can we do about racist comments or symbols in our school? Should we just be quiet and kind of hope no yeah we need to do I, something I, about yeah. it because i really Margie, I these right are just you. little tender vessels yeah. right and they hold our futures i remember them, being right? bullied as a kid and i'm almost 50 i'll be 50 years old yeah and i yeah. remember i'm like wow you know like those things as a child i don't remember a lot of stuff but i remember That's that right. you know what i mean and it, it affects yeah. you and you learn from the people you're around and the adults and mm -hmm. if the adults aren't talking about That's it right then you carry this little kernel of shame. Mm -hmm. You don't even know it's an open forum yeah. to talk about. So I think it's really our duty Thank to you. protect their souls. Yeah. That sounds so corny, and I'm no, sure I'll be true. accused of, of no. it by the cynical members, but no, you okay. know, I, I spend time with a lot of special needs students, and I was telling my 94-year-old friend who's a poet, I said, <laughs> I love it because their souls are transparent. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's and why I love working with them. They cannot obscure yeah. their feeling. They right. are there. Right. Yeah. And those are the people I want to be around because right. they're so alive. Yes. Right. And they're so true. They don't have yes. the governors that and the rest of us And we need to protect that kind yes. of honesty yes. and be right. vigilant yes. about it. Right. So if Amen. I, you know, Amen. I can exactly. do that even so a little bit, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So, thank you. Yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly why I'm so delighted that you're in there because oh, you are that kind of person yeah. that would be a wonderful and thank advocate. You. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can help with the Absolutely. show, um, getting some of the word out. Please. Yeah, that, yeah that that because be we are an yeah. issues-based show. Yeah. So, so if there's wow. anything you want us I have to a bring list. up, yeah. please do. <laughs> please we're do. always looking for yeah, great topics in the school. Great. Yeah. Because so, you, you do yeah. it in such a such a congenial and warm Aww. way that this Aww. is <laughs> this is the environment to do it in instead of around the board table yeah. with right, people yeah. grimacing. I think yeah. this is um, <laughs> thank you. Doing it facing your smile. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're actually done with this. Okay. Time flies when you're having great conversation it does and thank you yep thank you thank, thank you, you. for so serving much for and thank you me. for well, thank you for this forum being wonderful yes. great you're welcome thank, thank you. you and thank we'll be back we'll be back this week on all about hot wheels may i not sit down with firefighter paramedics tim and julie in south korea as they talk about signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy-to-use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of Naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use, and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal Naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining Naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Hi, welcome back. So now we would like to talk about Hopkinton Dog Park. Yes. So uh, one town meeting said, yes, let's have the dog park at Hughes property, yep. which is 192 Hayden Row. And then the last town meeting said, well, we're not so sure if we want to do that. Um, there was money granted by something called, where is it, 
in Community Preservation Act money to kick off the project. That's a lot of money. Yes, then there was a $250,000 grant from the Stanton Foundation with wow. major costs being engineering and a wetland crossing, digging a well, di installing an irrigation system. Wow. Part of the foundation's mission is to support dog-human relationships. Interesting. So the money is there. That's a lot of money. Money, a lot of money That's is there. That's a lot of money. But um, what happened, what's happening is Putting it on the Hughes property means mm -hmm. it's in between two neighborhoods. Yes. And the neighbors are not right. so happy about that for various reasons. Right. And as there are there regulations, I mean, behind exactly. it. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. for someone that uses, I ride my horse in Hawkington State Park and Ashland State Park, and there are a lot of dogs off leash. Mm. Some dogs are very well behaved, some dogs not so much. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that's where people kind of get concern you know right. what I mean and and I think you know really the responsibility goes back on the owners to clean up I mean so the rules are there any rules in there place? there I have I, <laughs> so I did they, that too yes so good. This, <laughs> this article that I'm reading is actually um by the wonderful Jonathan Phelps awesome. in our Hopkinton crier of last week I believe um and he referred to a couple people that because there was a meeting Monday night with Parks and Rec because this is under Parks and Rec department as a park yeah. Um, and there were people, uh, he quoted Kathy Gamash, who's on Granite Street, mm -hmm. right oh, yeah. there. And she said the neighborhood opposition goes beyond the traffic. So you'd have you'd have increased traffic. Sure. Is there in, parking there? And I haven't been on well, the Well, they site. would have to build they parking. They would have to have that, a parking. Yeah. But, but you'd have more traffic coming up and down the street. Abs She's on the corner. And that's already a tough place. She's on place. the corner of Granite and that. and um, Right. And then, but she's saying... Um, Water is a concern because of runoff and dog waste right. leaching into the water, disruption of going in and out of the park, which is the, the driving, yeah. and noise from cars, from dogs. Right. Um, and then Rich Whitehouse asked why they were talking about the Hughes property right. and why not Fruit Street, which is... You know, it's the old pine right. land and it's, that's it's, just piles of dirt. Right. There's no, there is no neighborhood there. So um, they were worrying good, about yeah. well water during the daily flushing because I guess if they hose down right. the, the property, right. it's going to leach into the, the right. water. And there's a walking trail that goes from Deer Run to the Hughes property. Right. A trail project in front of the Conservation Commission that our John Ritz in the corner office said... <laughs> Is a great trail, right? You know, so if you have dogs and a, and a trail right. and horses and yes, and I ride that. I've ridden Deer Run many times, and yeah. that I guess that you know, and I I look at myself as I have a very large animal that I sit on their back, and they're very well behaved. Right, you can control. Yeah, them. I can control mm -hmm. my horses. Yeah. you know, cars can go by, people mm -hmm. can pet them, they can mm -hmm. stand very still, and I guess kind of my pet peeve a little bit is with dogs because I've had dogs run under my horse's legs, around my horse's legs, and I love dogs. Oh, wait, I, and then the leash gets all tangled. Yeah, tangle? yeah, yeah. And I've had dogs mm. bite my horse, and my mm. horse stands like a statue because I'm kind of tough. You're telling the horse. Yeah, I'm like, you stand still, and they'll stand still. And I've literally had to get off the horse, wow. grab the dog, and hand the dog back wow. to the owner. To and untangle. that's yeah. So it's it's just in one. Luckily, my horses are good, but at some point I've had young horses that I was training, and I, I would tell the dog owners, please, you know, keep your dog yeah. back. I'm afraid the dog will get hurt or my sure. horse will take off or whatever. Because when I'm learning, you know, yeah. I, I don't generally actually go to those areas when they have a young horse. But that's something, you know, when you have dogs, you have little kids running. If it's a walking trail, deer run, lots of people hike that. You know what I mean? So it's 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 a little tough. So, like, the rules are important, and I right. know... In the state park, I saw on some of our Hopping, Hoppington Facebook pages, the lady got bit on the trail. Yeah, I didn't. And, I hadn't heard of yeah, that. Yeah, so I that heard... was just last a week or week or two ago. And if anybody's watching knows more about that, yeah, call we in. Had, we had posted kind of the rules of the state park. And yeah. DCR has pretty much the same rules. Some parks let, you know, Department of Conservation and Recreation, it's, you know, Hopkinton State Park, Ashland State Park, Whitehall. Um, they have certain rules, like mm -hmm. dogs should be on leash, dogs yeah. are allowed or they're not allowed. There are certain uses of the, the park. So, I mean, but most of those parks, I mean, I ride every weekend and I'm in those parks and most of the dogs are off leash. Yeah. And There's... I would say, and not being facetious, but I would say 50-50. 
on how many owners can control their dogs and 50 okay. that can't. Horses, granted, bring out a whole different ball sure. game because a lot of dogs have never seen horses right. before. Right, and the smell, the, probably the smell right. drives them nuts because right. they don't know what that right. thing is that smells exactly. like. Exactly, so that, yeah. that's an extraordinary circumstance. But mm -hmm. if people are walking and things like that, that's, you know, the, I think the responsibility lies on the owner. Cause of course. Because as a horse owner, I'm very careful with the way I manage my horse. Right. You know, so it's... You know, yep. I, I think really it kind of goes back on the owners, and Absolutely. if the owners are responsible, then right. You so know. there are some guidelines, um, and before before I read them, I, yes. I just wanted to mention that I know that recently there's a dog park in Framingham near um, the, the the arena there, the skating arena, right? And a, a large dog chomped a yeah. smaller dog to death. Yeah, it killed it. Yeah. So yeah. you know. It's leashes, dogs. not yeah. leashes. Yeah, it's a dog park, and they're dogs and they're animals, and this happens. So, yeah. so yeah. you do need to be careful of those things. Um, some of the guidelines here for dog parks um, from what what website this is, but um, it was talked about. There should be adequate fences that dogs can't dig under or jump over. Adequate parking, one gate that securely latches. So a dog rushing through so the first, enclosed so it's enclosed park. dog park. They don't mm. want the dogs to get out and into neighborhoods and take right. off or go into and a street. And I've never seen. I mean, I've never even seen. This one. is. I don't oh. know. If, these are recommendations. Is, these are guidelines. I don't know mm. if that's what they're having here. Visible and that's signs a huge cost. should yeah. establish rules. Users should be advised that they will be using the park at their own risk, including but not limited to the risk of being bitten, knocked right. down, right. tripped, etc. Right. Number of dogs per person must be limited. One of these mentioned that that you should keep out the professional dog walkers yeah, like who could come with them or, exactly <laughs> and 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 you know multiply the the uh, results of one dog doing their business right. times 10 right um and then age and of who the regulates user. it but sorry go ahead exactly. keep going yeah um it says the age of users must be limited i'm not sure what that means so maybe not minors maybe not minors maybe yeah. not elders i don't know right professional dog walkers should register at least every dog has a collar every owner possess a, possess a leash but still that from, means for they're... dog to and from the car and so this sounds like it's a no a no leash, leash park yeah Display license, be current vaccination. How do you check that? Yeah. So everyone bringing a dog to the park has to have a driver's license. If there are problems, no dog left unattended. Right. You know, no dog if previously judged dangerous, no dogs previously having bitten, right. no one, no dogs known to initiate feist. So that dogs is, in some must dogs remain you would never know. on leash at all times coming to and from the dog run. So there are all kinds of things that you well, have to think about in in this circumstance because right. so much can go wrong well so and to play devil's advocate or yeah. as a citizen of hockington yeah. yeah my cpa money that i've contributed is going to a park that's just dogs i don't have dogs right so does it benefit i mean i like to see parks to be multi-use right you know well and, and that's the point in yeah. this huge property this huge property was set aside for multi uses right that's the bylaw or, right yeah. so so initially you know so the whole point of that so area, can i take my horse there in the middle of the dog park and let him off I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> i'm being snarky no, but no. yeah he just but, grass, but the but town but, purposed that uh, yeah. bought the town purchased 192 hayden row for active and passive recreation yeah dan terry said plans have been modified based on the work of consultants so that the property was not purchased as a dog park it's right. purchased for active and passive recreation which includes trails who owns it who, the town oh so it's a town park it's That's a town a park I, town park but it should be it's its purpose is that hughes property yeah. hughes property is active and passive recreation it, it wasn't purchased as a dog park right um, and I think the suggestion is Fruit Street right. is not near neighborhoods, right. it, which eliminates the noise issue, eliminates the wastewater issue, right. eliminates, right. you know, what a if lot the dog of, and takes And that's a off. lot of space. A lot of space. Another thing, I guess, in, you know, I know we pay for sports fields for specific sports. I know we pay for certain things for specific things, but just yeah. for one use one dog use i feel like that should be privately funded oh, because like well, i don't you know i'd be curious to know how many dog owners in our town one would have you know like would use the park right and number two i mean a lot of people have dogs but they don't have time to take to them to a park mm -hmm. so when we get people from a lot of other communities that's not oh. the necessity of a 
you know, like a town property. I mean, well, they did and, get... and I feel like it, it would almost be a private property thing. And I love dogs. Yeah, yeah. All you dog owners out there, I'm not anti-dog right, at right. all, but I think it's, but this you know, is as saying, a citizen. Yeah. This is saying that um, town meeting rejected 150000 in community preservation money yeah. for that project. And so they just didn't gave take. them the 30. They have, uh, let's see, so they rejected it. The commission received 50,000 in 2016 when they said, oh, yes, let's do this. That was a vote in 2016. Okay. Now they said, don't give them 150,000 more, but this private foundation okay. is the one giving the 250,000. Okay. So the, if the but whole still, money it received was 300,000, only 50,000 of it is CPA money. Right. Um, yeah, so that, that additional money is for the engineering of the wetland crossing, the well, the irrigation Ugh. system, and the entire area's fencing. I want a horse park. No. I know, right? <laughs> That's a good idea. I'm sorry. Do that. I'm being snarky, but yeah. No. So but, the point is, yeah. yes, it is supposed to be the Hughes property purchased by the town right. is supposed to be active and passive recreation, recreation. Yeah. not just dog. Right. And and the point is, take the 250000 from the Stanford foundation yeah put it into buy a couple put it into the food street yeah. property yeah. because that's Purchase just sitting the there town. Yeah, you know because that was going to be um part of it is fields right. stanton excuse me stanton foundation so i think they have a good point and i guess what i, I heard agree. was that at the meeting monday night um the parks and rec said they're just going to start all over again right. and look at everything again right. so they're back to zero okay. you know um to, but to i mean this is your again. opportunity as a citizen of yeah. hockington to give input i have my right. opinion obviously yep but you know that's that's an opportunity right. i mean for someone that loves open space and has been very involved in it yep. when it's multi-use when you make it a dog park particularly fenced in mm -hmm. that yep doesn't make it multi-use and we know? actually have to to close now yes <laughs> but speak or forever hold your peace yes let people know what you think thanks yep. for joining us thank and you and we'll see you next week yes thank you yeah